When someone asks us a question, the first thing we must remember to do is listen. Don't rush in with an answer. And in particular, if you're asked a question and you think to yourself, fantastic, I actually know the answer to this one, don't rush in with an answer. Listen to what is actually being asked. One of the first skills in listening is to pick up that a question is being actually asked of you because not all questions are posed as questions. Sometimes someone will ask for an answer by issuing a challenge or expressing a strong opinion. So they might not ask, aren't all religions really the same? Instead they might say, I think all religions are really the same. Both of these are asking for an answer, although only the first has a question mark at the end. We need to be listening when we talk to people so that we hear them ask for an answer, even if it's posed as a challenge rather than a question. Two things require answers, questions and challenges, and we need to have ears to hear the opportunities that arise and we should pray for boldness to answer. So whether it's a question or a challenge, what's the next thing to do, given that you've listened carefully and tried to understand what's being asked? In many, if not most cases, the best thing to do next is to respond with a question of your own. This has a number of benefits. Firstly, and most obviously, it helps you to clarify whether you really have understood what the person is asking. What do you mean exactly, you might ask? Why do you ask that question? Just let me check that I'm hearing you right. You're asking and then summarise what you understand the question to be. There's a further benefit to answering with a question. People who have been listened to are more likely to listen. If we take the trouble to clarify and check that we understand where the questioner is coming from, then we're much more likely to get a hearing when we do actually give an answer. A third reason for responding with a clarifying question is that it helps us to give an answer that's appropriate to the person's real concerns. Because sometimes there's a question behind the question. So for example, suppose someone says to you, discussing religion just divides people and causes problems. Well, there are several issues that could lie behind this challenge. The person might have had a bad experience in their past. Perhaps their family has been split apart over religious issues. And so this is a very personal and painful statement for them. Or their objection could be based more on their social or political convictions. They might think that the most important virtue in society is harmony and that harmony ought to be maintained at any price and getting rid of religion would be a price well worth paying. Or they might have a false view of history and think that most wars have begun because of religion, ignoring the fact that most wars, certainly in modern times, have had nothing to do with religion and certainly not with the Christian gospel. What is the person really asking? What are they troubled by in particular? What type of question is this? If we don't know, there is every chance that our answer will not be helpful to them. So we need to ask for more information and to listen to the response.